We're going to look at how to find the equation of an exponential regression. So I've got a data set already typed in here, and if I zoom in on my data set, I can see that it fits what an exponential function should look like. It has more rapid growth followed by slower growth. Uh, it kind of looks like the first several points look linear, but then the growth slows down over here at the end, and so an exponential function may fit this data set better. All right, so to begin with exponential regression, we need to know what an exponential equation looks like. So y or f of x equals a times b to the x. We're going to focus on the y equals a b to the x part so that we can do our regression. This table has variables called x1 and y1. So I'm going to be replacing y with y1 and x with x1. So y1 is approximately a b to the x1. And so I see that I have a decreasing exponential model that is fairly close to the data points. Now, there is something on this exponential model that is different from something like a linear regression. There's a log mode button option right here. And the log mode button changes the regression to a slightly simpler calculation. And this is the calculation that the old TI-80 calculators were able to do. My computer is a little more powerful than the calculator, so it can compute them without having to take the logarithm of the values, but the old calculators could not do so. So if I click on the log mode button box, it does the same kind of exponential regression calculation, but it will change the values of A and B. So I'm going to click that box, and we can notice how it changes it just slightly. It still fits good, and sometimes actually it'll fit better with the log mode button box checked, Sometimes it will fit better without a check. I'm actually going to copy and paste this so we can compare the two. Okay, so with the button checked, we have an R squared value of 0.9857. Without it checked, we have an R squared value of 0.9875. They're both extremely good fits. However, the non-checked one is slightly higher in this case. It can be reversed depending on what the data set is like. Sometimes the log mode button box checked can have a higher R squared. Now, which one you are going to use is going to depend on your context. Um, a lot of times for my classes, we're going to use the one that has the log mode button box checked. And the reason for that is, is that it allows students who are using a handheld calculator to get the same answers as those of us that are using Desmos. And for my math lab in particular, my math lab answers are programmed one way. They're programmed to have the same answer for any student, no matter what device. And so we need to check the log mode button box here. So I'm going to keep this button checked. I'm going to close out of the other equation for right now. So let me do that. And then we can write the function. And so our function f of x is going to be equal to, my parameter for a is 326.898 times b, which is 0 0.990, so I don't need to keep a third place on that, to the x. And um, I did have to round that value a little bit. I could have typed more places in, but that value is still rounded, even if I had typed the 0 0.00. Uh, 5, 1 after the 9 9 there, it still would have been rounded, so there is still some discrepancy, and I can actually see that my lines are diverging a little bit right here. If I need a little more accuracy, I could do a g of x function where in place of a, I type a, and in place of b, I type b, because the letters a and b have, at the end of the regression statement, been imbued with those values. So a has more decimal places uh, for the parameter A, B now has more decimal places for the parameter B, and so I can see that the blue line is going to match exactly with the purple one from the regression statement.